Which race carries the pure Afaronic ancient Egyptian bloodline today? Our true identity connects us to our wings. Reptilian Ashtauri bloodlines introduced blood groups. We see here that they are ancient beings that were very smart, very intelligent, very brilliant. Why are RH and negative blood types more psychic? You can find this discussion on this uh, pin interest site that is shown on our diagram here. Pharaonic African black blood groups debunked again. A Kenyan with blood type A can give blood to a Norwegian with blood type A. Yet a Norwegian close relative or young brother or young sister with uh, blood type B cannot. How can this be? Why is this like this? Why is this arrangement like that? We know uh, the heart is not a pump, does not pump blood, is a regulator of blood. We also know that blood is manufactured in the bones and we also know that blood pressure is created by your first breath and the, the mechanisms or the mechanical functions of your uh, ribs your lungs and your diaphragm but we are not aware or we don't know where blood groups came from the discussion here is about uh, the origins of the blood groups and we have king tut's blood uh, type a presence of blood type a for example is held to signify the Caucasian character of the ancient Egyptians by many Egyptologists. Uh, the presence of type A2 and its uh, MN antigens is held to show that a white a Nordic or European uh, presence was there in Egypt and further King Tut. Is this correct? Is this true? Can we follow this clearly? When you study and you go into this study of the blood group types, it's the blood group and the blood group research shows Africans having high levels of type A well within the range for Tutankhamen. We know that uh, uh, Gobinho would die of rage and shame when he, if he realizes and understands that because he believed that Europeans were the most genetically pure race, the most intellectually gifted and the least weakened by racial mixing. There is nothing like that today. There have been a lot of mixing. You can see here that we have mixed up and the blood groups are clear indications that this has happened. But what we know came from Africa. Do ancient Egyptians share same blood types with Europeans? This is what we are looking for and we, this is what we are researching. Supporters and sympathizers of the European origins of Pharaonic Egypt are said that uh, because of the presence of blood type A2 and its MN antigens attached, they say that that is conclusive that a white Nordic Egypt uh, originated and existed. And they say there was no Negroid groups and they have said MN antigens with A2 never uh, existed. That's what uh, they teach. But when we come to the facts, it's not like that. You look at these pie charts, you find that the proponents and sympathizers who assert that the blood type A2 has MN antigens attached and this conclusively shows a white Nordic Egypt since no Negroid group have uh, said a, a antigens it is it is baseless and wrong it's quite clear you can see that this claim is complete nonsense and above those diagrams are showing you that the A2 is found in the Europeans and also A2 is found in Africans specifically in Zimbabwe comparison of European and African blood type A2 is minor compared to the main group. This is very straightforward. That has uh, been e explained. 
The same story is found here. The blood group research shows Africans having high levels of type A, which does not surprise us if uh, King Tut has the same thing. So we know that 60% uh, of the ancient mummies had type O. This preponderance is also seen in Bantu groups which show more O than Europeans. At Manchester University in the 1970s conducted a number of blood group tests on mummies using a mixed cell agglutination technique of the nine uh, mummies tested using this technique. Three were in group A, five group O, and one group uh, AB. You can find and read about this in uh, Dr. A. Rosalie David, 1986 publication, Science in Egyptology, uh, Proceeding of the Proceedings of the Science in Egyptology, Symposia, page 381. It's, fact, it's, it's very obvious that the percentage there tells us that it's Africans that dominate. As regards type O, the greatest frequencies are found in the Americas, Australia, Africa, not Europe. So you find this is blood type O+, plus, and it's racist factor. In Egypt, the frequency of O is 33%, Beckham 1959. Compared to the Bantu average of 46%, that's O, universal donor. Beckham 1959, compared to smaller O frequencies of Europe. In terms of type O then, the African percentages are much closer to the ancient Egyptians than Europeans. Point taken. Two out of three blood groups, O and A, shows that Africans are closer to the Egyptians. Africans 66%, Europeans 33%. Uh, than uh, Europeans advantage Africa. The reality is very clear. The question is why do scholars hide this from the masses? This is the map that one has to look at with uh, distribution of blood groups given all over. The ancient Egyptians always knew that their ancestors came from the south and they pinpointed Punt as one of the areas. So their blood group would never be of any other type other than that which is found dominating the area or the zone where they come from. We look at the Sudan and Somalia blood uh, studies, same bloodlines with ancient mummies. These are the Somalis. You see that? These are the Somalis. And these are the ancient Egyptians. These are the ancient Sudanese. Uh, these are the modern Sudanese. And the ancient Egyptians, they look the same. They are the same people. Now, uh, Sudanese blood studies... Uh, noted that type A is highest in stereotypical negroid groups like the Nuba, higher than and more than the white Arabs or Caucasian Arabs. Not too how other negroid groups like the Dinka post type A percentages almost as high as possible. This is diversity which undercuts the Aryan theory that Aryans came and fertilized Egypt. You see here, this is the image that they float the mummies of Rameses to. We know that it didn't look like that. But we just show you because it's uh, what is found on the internet. Blonde hair, straight hair, red hair, and all the cheekbones and all that. These are over 20, they are over 20 recognized variants of group A. Although about 95% all A's are A1, most of the variants are found in Africa and probably represents adaptation to local uh, parasites. This includes A2, AX, and A. Uh, they are found in the Bantu. This was by Dr. D. R. Adamo, 2002, Complete Blood Types Encyclopedia, page 14. So you also should note that the frequency of A2, supposedly a reserved Caucasian marker, is higher among United States Negroes than in the Egyptian samples, and almost as high as that of the PES setting German Nautics. Also, note that the frequencies of type O and B in United States Negroes exceed those of the Nordics too. Type B in Egyptians also exceeds that of the model Nordics. A2 is minor. So, it's quite clear, straightforward that the blood types all originated in Africa. Why do we have uh, different blood types? What causes your blood type? I think, and it's clear that it's the creator. The creator of our ancestors. The first ancestor. The types uh, of proteins, glycoproteins and glycolipids found or expressed on the surfaces of the red blood cells define blood types. So ancient Egyptian pharaohs live inside us if we have their blood type. Our ancient ancestors also live in our blood. 
Why do people have different blood uh, types? Because that's what nature has given them. That's what the creator has given them. It, or a blood type, also called blood group, is a classification of blood based on the presence and absence of antibodies. So blood type origins remain a mystery. No one knows why humans have them. But their function is popular and is known. They are there and they differentiate us. We cannot uh, argue about that. It is quite clear, therefore, that Africa has more than enough genetic power in ancient times, today and forever, to create diversity of blood types. It is the motherland. It is where Put, this is where Put is. This is where Egypt is. It's in Africa. So they were not anything else other than African. So you must say thank you to ancient Egypt for preserving this knowledge because this knowledge gives us our true identity which breeds uh, success. Now, one of the greatest ways to be successful is to eat right for your blood type. To find what your blood type was. These are ancient Egyptians preparing their food and eating their food. Definitely they were not all on the right or all correct, but at least they had a sense of knowledge and purity because they were the origins, they were close to the knowledge that drove them, that gave them the civilization that we see and we are amazed at today. Know your ancient identity. If your ancestors were a great people, their greatness is in your blood. Activate that using this knowledge. How do you activate it? By sharing this uh, knowledge. Thank you very much. Uh, subscribe to our channel. This is Hamiti Hebrew Ethics, a uh, priest teacher, uh, uh, rabbi. We hope to offer solutions to problems of life. Thank you. Goodbye.